so response action allow you to trim down the return data i have included the response action but within the response action we have one option as well hello everyone in this video we will dive deeper into each best practice providing a detailed explanation to help you optimize your integrations with salesforce omni studio platform so let's start with the best practices that we should follow while creating an integration procedure in velocity so first one is use integration procedure for all data calls to salesforce so in this case in salesforce an integration procedure is an efficient server side declarative tool used for making external data calls to salesforce using integration procedure for all data calls to the salesforce ensures that your integrations are optimized for performance and reliability this approach helps to maintain consistency and significantly reduces the risk of errors associated with manual integrations method the second one is avoid too many data calls in the same integration procedure so salesforce imposes strict limitations on the number of soql queries and dml operations that can be executed in a single transaction so to avoid hitting these limits and impacting performance it's important to break down your integration procedure logically instead of packing too many data calls into single integration procedure divide them across multiple smaller procedure that can be handled independently the third one is ensure data security and compliance with encrypted fields so ensure data security and compliance with encrypted fields what does that means is when working with encrypted fields in salesforce like password and sin number or any other fields like where we don't want the users to be provide that info in that case when working with encrypted fields in that case salesforce all always ensures that the user has the view encrypted data permission before attempting to process or display decrypted values this ensures that sensitive data remains secure and only authorized user can access the decrypted data implementing the correct permission checks will help you maintain compliance with data security policies and prevent potential data breaches now the next is use a modular approach a modular approach breakdowns complex tasks into smaller ones manageable pieces by creating integration procedure with smaller related function you ensure that they are reusable and easier to troubleshoot this approach leads to more maintainable integration procedures allowing for easier updates and modifications in the future a modular structure also promotes better scalability as your business grows and new integrations need arise now next is use response action to trim data so whenever returning data through integration procedure it's important to minimize the size of the data sent so response action allow you to trim down the return data to only the essential fields that the calling process requires by using trimming strategies such as send response transformation property you can reduce the payload size and improve overall performance reducing the amount of data transfer also speeds up response times and reduce network load let's take an example for this this is the integration procedure that i have where i'm fetching the applicant personal details so as you can see i have two extract data mappers and the one response action as well so if i don't add this response action it will uh, return the response of these two data mappers i have included the response action but within the response action we have one option as well return entire json output what it's going to do is it's going to return all the components output whatever like if we have a 10 components here it's going to return all the 10 components output even though it's a set value as well it's going to return the value or output into the response 
response json but as we mentioned reduce the response or trim the response so we can either use send json path or send json node so here you can see i am fetching the get applicant personal details and within that i am fetching the personal details node only so let's say if this data mapper returns more than one node i am just fetching whatever i need i am not including other info that is not needed for my scenario also if you want you can use an additional output as well where you can pass key and the value the value would be same like it can be different as well like i'm just taking an example here so you can put the same value here but assign a node here let's say uh, personal info so it's gonna return personal info node and all the data inside that and if you want another node let's say uh within personal info you want a specific field data as well so you can use that first name and call this colon from personal info details node you want to fetch first name so now it's gonna return these two options only in the response not the complete output so that's what trim the response json in the integration procedure so next one is exit early with multiple response actions a common technique to improve efficiency is to use multiple response actions with different executions conditional formulas this allow an integration procedure to exit early if certain conditions are met by doing so you can avoid unnecessary processing and reduce the computational load this practice is especially useful when dealing with large data set or complex workflow so let's take an example of this ip it has a complex structure loop log and set values data mappers as well extract post and turbo action as well so let's take an example like this is a generic ip that we are calling throughout other flows as well or other features but for one of the feature we don't want the complete structures to be follow in that case what we can do is let's say for the feature that i'm working right now i want data till here i can include a response action right after that and add a conditional block on that and pass that flag from the component from where i'm calling this ip you can create a flag by true or false if that is true then call this response action and then it won't call any other element after that it's going to increase the performance of your website so that's the example for that scenario so now the next is use caching for frequently accessed data so let's take an example of this so caching is a like technique that stores frequently accessed data in memory reducing the need for repeated calls to external systems when working with data that is accessed frequently but updated infrequently such as reference data or static content caching improves the performance of your integration by returning data quickly omni studio data mapper can be used to implement caching and improve response times even in the integration procedure also we have the caching option if you can see here cache configuration so either you can disable cache definition cache but he here we have either session cache or or cache there are two different cache session is for that particular login session and the or cache is your platform or cache in the salesforce setup we have a platform cache it's going to store into that and times to live in minutes so you can put any times here like within the session if you want then it's going to be like uh, it's totally up to the requirement so you can follow this and store that ip response into cache so next time if you call the same ip it's not going to call the complete ip it's going to it's going to check and get the output from the salesforce or session cache itself avoid empty loop blocks so loop blocks are used to iterate over collection of data executing a set of action for each item in the list so in ip also we have loop blocks so as you can see here i have this loop block i'm running a loop on this list so if a loop block does not contain any action element it serve no purpose so which means if this loop block does not have these many actions so within that i have these many action so if it does not have any action so it's going to run the loops and doesn't do any action on that so it serve no purpose and can negatively impact performance empty loop blocks may indicate a design flow or unnecessary iteration always ensure that your loop blocks contain relevant actions and are properly optimized to handle the data efficiently now let's jump to the next so run data operation asynchronously so based on your requirement when designing integrations it's important to choose
choose the right asynchronous operation based on your needs. There are three main operations for running data operations. So when you call the integration procedure from the data uh, from the OmniScript, you have these remote properties. One is future method. You can choose this future method for the asynchronous. This is ideal when the calling process does not require an immediate response and the completion time is not critical. So you can choose this. So here also the mention select to make the integration procedure run asynchronously as a Salesforce future method. So in Apex also we have the future method. So it's going to behave like that only. So invoke mode fire and forget. So here you can see fire and forget invoke method. You can choose this and this option runs the integration procedure immediately without waiting for a response. It's best used when the calling process does not need any data back from the integration procedure and there is a non-blocking option as well so this method allows the integration procedure to run asynchronously while continuing the user interaction of the calling process a response is returned once the integration procedure is complete or you can use chainable use continuation queueable and queueable chainable options as well to check the governor limits such as query limits or run asynchronously you can use these options as well so these are the same continuation that we have it on the apex and queable as well the same that functionalities that we have it on the apex sides we can use the same implementation on the integration procedures as well so that's it so by incorporating these best practice into your salesforce integration procedure you can achieve higher performance better maintainability and improved security for your integrations so these practices are desired to help you optimize your workflows prevent errors and ensure that your integration tasks are completed efficiently thanks